Right boys, it is Iconic Tactics again for you today is episode 5. We've already covered Ralph Raniak, ZX Zaman, Jose Mourinho, Johan Cruyff and today we are looking at Arrigo Saki's late 80s, early 90s AC Milan side. We're looking at a 4-4-1-1, a 4-4-2 tactic link down below if you want to download it. Put it into your save, let me know down in the comments how it works for you. Jump in the Discord if you want to show me how it's been working for you and I'd much appreciate if you smash a like on today's video, subscribe if you haven't. Let's go and see how I've put this iconic tactic together. First of all, let's have a look at Arrigo Saki's 4-4-2 or 4-4-1-1. Arrigo, Arrigo Saki basically transformed Italian football. It was quite dull at the time, a lot of cat catinaccio, defensive sort of like styles. He came in with a high press, quick vertical passing, things that we're looking for in today's tactic. And intriguingly, the role of Rude Hullet, the shadow striker we're going to use today. So basically, he would set up in as like a 4 4 2, 4 4 1 1. Four very solid defenders, Maldini and Tosotti at fullbacks, would both kind of venture forward, but they wouldn't be the out and out, so like complete wingbacks that you see today. Baresi and Costa Curta, Baresi often would move into midfield, would dribble more so. We've picked a team today in Juventus who I think can kind of replicate this tactic the best. Into midfield, they had Donadoni and Colombo both out wide. Both could do, both could come inside the sort of like interiors, but would prefer to kind of stay on the outside. Very much structured, would help fullbacks, would help support the central midfielders and obviously would support the attack. We've got Rijkaard and Ancelotti. As you can see, there's a little aerial for Ancelotti going forward. He was very much a box-to-box -box midfielder, would often score goals, sort of like headers out, clearances, pullbacks from the edge of the area. He was in and around that area. And then Rijkaard would be in as a sort of like a playmaker, deep line playmaker. And then up front, Van Basten, two of the very best in Marco Van Basten and Rude Hullet. Now, you could say that Rude Hullet was a striker, but we're just using him as a, a shadow striker today. I'm going to show you lots of clips pretty much focused around how this shadow striker is working and how bloody brilliant it basically is. I've decided to use Juventus mainly because of the team and the players available. I did it with Milan to start with and we didn't have a great pre-season. I thought, which, thinking about what... What big club kind of suits this formation? And I remember that I'd done a Juventus video a while ago. I also thought they've got a, a, a decent array of central midfielders who can kind of do both roles. They've also got two, a lot of wide players, players like obviously Chiesa, um, Quadrado, Kloveski, Bernadeschi, players that are quite comfortable playing in deeper midfield positions rather than up here and playing inside forwards. I also wanted to, first of all, I, I had the idea of playing Dybala here, but I think... What we're going to see in the match engine in particular, you need this role to be a little bit more dynamic and he doesn't really suit it. If we look at Dybala very quickly, even though his, his technical attributes are, are brilliant, he comes very deep. We don't necessarily need him to come deep. He plays one twos, which kind of fits in well, but does dwell on the ball. I, I do find that this on and off the ball, having Chiesa in here has been fantastic. And then a complete forward, I kind of thought, who's like an old school number nine? Um, Van Basten was very good in the air, very good before he got all those, I think it was knee, was it knee or ankle injuries? An out and out goal scoring machine. And um, even though he's not like it in real life, I think Alvo Morata kind of covers what I want in the striker. Obviously at a decent size, so he's good in the air. Can work the channels, did a little bit of pace as well. And obviously, even though maybe not in real life, but in the football manager terms, 16 finishing for Morata. And he has scored 10 goals in nine games for me. Okay, so what are the principles of an Arrigo Saki tactic? What we're looking at is compactness. To push up the field now, we are playing with an offside trap, which I thought would cause loads of problems. Back in the late 80s, the offside rule was different, where you could basically, I think anybody who was in an offside position was classed as offside. No interfering with play and all that kind of stuff, phases that we have now. Um, so that made it a little bit easier, but basically the players would squeeze high up the pitch. The distance between the defence and then the, the striker would be very, very small. It was very tight, very compact, basically not allowing any space in the half spaces, not allowing teams to pass through them. They would have to go around them or they would have to go over them basically to get any opportunity on getting an attack on goal. So that's what we've created. Attacking wise, it was quite varied. It would quite often be quick vertical passes. So into the back four, People like Baresi moving forward, passing into the midfield and then linking up with a midfielder and then obviously then linking up, looking for maybe a Van Basten run and, um, into Van Basten, into Van Basten's feet or trying to find maybe 
Hull it in the half spaces or even Hull it as a third man run. So, how have I set it up in the game? Mentality, we're going positive. In possession, fairly wide. I didn't want it too wide because the two wide players, they did like to drift in on occasions, but they were also there to really support the fullbacks and also really support the central midfielders. So I didn't want it too wide and too open. We're playing out of defence. We want the goalkeeper to get it, play it into his back four, and then we can play more expressive. In transition, counter-pressing, obviously, massive part. One of the first sort of like teams to really counter-press was Saki's AC Milan. So we've got that on with counter. We're distributing goalkeeper, taking short kicks and distributing, once again, to the defenders. Out of possession, probably the most important part. We're using the offside trap, which I know people in the comments will already say it's a dangerous game to play, but it's realistic to what he did in real life. I'm trying to keep these more as a realistic tactic rather than an overpowered tactic. Get stuck in. It's the late 80s, late 80s, early 90s. That would have been going on. Trigger press much more often. And then obviously high line of engagement. I've not done it on very high. I don't necessarily want Maratta in the centre forward, a shadow striker, to go and close down the goalkeeper. I want that line to be nice and compact. And if Maratta then starts going closing the goalkeeper down, you often find as well they close down the goalkeeper and the press is beaten because he'll play into a back four. He'll play out to a full back or something. So I've got it only on higher and much higher line of engagement. And then obviously we're trying to make that the compactness as thin and as narrow as we can as well. So we've got forced opposition out side. As in the players, we've got sweeper keeper on attack. Just because, obviously, one of the only play successes a team will be able to get from this is by balls over the top. So we need our goalkeeper to be on his toes, ready for balls coming over the top. Two fullbacks. I've just put these on support. Main reason because it was the late 80s, early 90s. Even though Maldini and Tosotti were very good at going forward, they weren't exactly sort of like complete Andy Robertson, Trent Alexander-Arnold, complete sort of like wingback. So just to give us a nice defensive structure as well, I've just put them on support. I have seen them get into nice little areas, often look, looking for pullbacks from defenders and things like that. In the middle of the back four, we've got Costa Curta, central defender on defend, and obviously the ball playing defender in Berezi. We've got that set as a ball playing defender on defend. Dribble more, so he dribbles into these areas here. Berezi like to do it. Mark Titer. We've also got uh, Delict. We've also got Delict uh, using this role, and he's been brilliant so far of carrying the ball. One thing I will say right now is before I forget, player instructions, they have all got Mark tighter. The idea for that is that they want one, the defenders will squeeze up the pitch. What we don't want to see is if we just use this dude as an attacking striker. I don't want them to get into these areas and our two defenders not doing anything. What they would do is the Rigo Sakis teams, they would go in and engage, press and put teams under pressure. Same with the middle field four as well. They would often go as a unit and they would go and press. What I don't want is my winger going and pressing in here, a full back perhaps, a, def a midfielder dropping off for them and getting spaces in here. What I want is my wingers moving up and then maybe a defensive and then my midfielders then going in and engaging as well in terms of pressing, marking tightly, giving our opponents no opportunity to play through the lines. Um, and from the clips that I'll show you in the match engine in a minute, it looks pretty bloody good. So, back four, there you go. Midfield, we've kept it quite basic. Two wingers on support. We could have gone with two wide players. In the middle of midfield, we've got our Ancelotti role, box-to-box -box midfielder with uh, Rijkaard as a deep-line playmaker on support. He will help transition the ball from defence to attack. Vertical, Quick vertical passes between the lines. In attack, we've got Shadow Striker. There was an argument that you could say... Um, Rude Hullet would be up here, but just because of the movements that we want, I think Shadow Striker is ideal. We've got Tackle Harder and Mark Titer, really aggressive pressing from him and uh, our complete forward, our Marco Van Basten in Maratta. Really excited to show you what I've seen so far in the game. Maratta has been brilliant at sort of like coming into these areas, working with the midfielders, working wide players, receiving longer passes from the defenders and then allowing the third man run of Chiesa to go in and score a lot of the goal. So there is the tactic. Remember, Mark Titer, all attacking players. It just helps, and I will show you in the match engine, it just helps squeeze the play up and it helps players get tighter, get closer to players that are potentially going to receive the ball and it gives you a better chance of sort of like turning the possession over. All right, that is the tactic. Tactic link down below if you want to go and plug it in. Let's go and just have a little look now in the match engine and see how it looks. Okay, first little highlight, this was our 3-0 win over rivals Milan. As you can see, we're in possession of the ball. There is our shadow striker coming quite deep this time, but running with the ball, I do think if you're going to play with this tactic, your shadow striker needs to be quite dynamic. I'm thinking Chiesa, obviously, Sancho, those sort of players 
who are going to get in between the lines and travel with it and dribble. A Bruno Fernandes, a Dybala, maybe are not well suited. You know, I think you need someone with a lot of energy in this role. I think we get a loss. Yeah, we get a loss of possession. But as we can see now, Locatelli is going to be my midfielder in about five seconds time who is going to win the ball back. So we're now transitioning from attack into defence. As you can see, we've lost the ball. Locatelli wants to get nice and tight. He gets in there. Who's that? Gone and pressed brilliantly. That must be Rabio, I think. Closing down the central striker. And then it comes in here to Tonelli and he's already off. Look, marking tighter, pressing urgently. We win the ball within the first sort of like minute and a half. In goes Maratta into the channel. He should score. To be fair, it's a decent save. But there you go. Highlight of showing how quickly you can wing back possession. Okay. Another one, little quick, little quick transition, just showing you how look nice little passing, vertical pass, Maratta coming in showing the feet. I think we work a nice little opportunity here. Oh no, we lose possession. We try and get the ball back, so instantly you can see the press. Players getting in to make the press, forcing the player backwards once again. No vertical pass. Good pressing from our left back Decilio. Once again, there we go. Another press coming in to try and engage, forcing them to play sideways, some backwards, giving us opportunity at this point. If you get in the opposition to play backwards, it then gives you your team more of an opportunity to get back in and get your shape back. We forced the play out wide. Remember I said they can only over go over around. Look, look how compact we are. The difference between the lines, the width between the two lines, defensive midfield is about what, maybe what, 20, 20 yards, 25 yards there. We forced an overlap. But we've got numbers in the wide areas with our wingers and fullbacks helping and Danilo comes in and makes a decent tackle. And another one here with the throw. Immediately we're going into press. Back towards goal again. Nothing in terms, if you look, nice and compact. Locatelli, Rabiot and Chiesa to pretty much making a midfield five for us. Having to force Salamakas to go backwards. Tonelli once again to go backwards. Soon as that initial dawdling on the ball, we're in. Locatelli steals it really well and then plays a nice quick vertical pass. We get a little bit of luck because of the error and to be fair, a bad miss for Morata, but pressing, forcing the team to play backwards, getting on top of the, getting on top of the team and as soon as an opportunity to nick the ball, we do it really well. Right, we're going to show a nice little clip now of Chiesa. Starting in sort of like a midfield role, but as soon as the opportunity to get into the box, he gets in there. It does help out that Morata moves out wide, so we need Chiesa. Look, he's already on the move. Trying to get in the penalty area. I think we work, try and work it a couple of times. I think we get a cross cleared first. But in there, look, he's pretty much as a central striker. The ball comes out to Rabiot. Nice, quick, vertical passes. Sandro into Chiesa. And he fires home in what we would class as what? Maybe a poaching position. Right, here we go. His kind of combination of the front two at its best. We're playing quick, vertical passes. Not giving the other team time to settle. Quick movement. Lovely pass by Rabiot. Chiesa is now working the channels. We're looking for Van Basten in the middle. There is Maratta. It's a brilliant cross. Van Basten S get in the in the box and an absolute bullet header. And then the last little one from this, I think this is a good one, just to show how Kiesa helps out the defensive team. So he's kind of going to press the centre half there. We're now engaging. Everyone's marking tighter. Danilo's going to come in there, look. So we can close down Rebic. And look where Kiesa is now. And once again, we've got a nice line of five. I'm going to show you, we're going to put a little screen up now. This is the average positions of a lot of our games and how compact the team is. Just usually, obviously, there's a lot of width. There's a lot of, sorry, there's a lot of space in behind. But so far, we've not been really punished in this. I think because we're forcing teams to play backwards, they're not getting the opportunity in these little spaces here to thread balls through. We're pressing so well as a team. Kiesa has done very well. He's actually helped out there. He's in the middle to make a midfield five. Very compact. And once again, we forced the player backwards. Right, let's show you two of Chiesa's goals against Villarreal. Proper shadow striker movement. Okay, so we get a free kick. It's pretty simple. Morata's come across to kind of try and half show to feet. It does then sort of like engage Pau Torres, the wider centre half. There is Chiesa and look at that space to go in. The, the left back has been concerned with the right midfielder in Quadrado. It's a nice little... Vertical pass from Kloveski, just touch out the feet and put in. Lovely third man run from Chiesa and a lovely finish. And then to win us the game in the final minute, once again, he's getting involved in the midfield play. Quick passes when we get the opportunity to play forward. We do Rogani's a nice little knock, attempted knock into Chiesa, who's now operating as a central striker. Half cleared, but... The initial press, in particular from Chiesa, his attitude has helped him win the ball, fires in. 
brilliant counter press to score as the winning goal in the Champions League. And as you can see, boys, if we just look at the two analysis, there's Villarreal's 4-3-3, quite open, a little bit of depth. Look at the look how narrow we are, number one, but also number two. Look at the but look at the compactness of the team, in particular, so sort of like the midfield five, if you include Chiesa and the back four. Very close together. It means teams have got to go around us or go over us. And as I said, so far, look at the heat map of the positioning of Chesney at the edge of the area, meaning that he's coming out and kicking and clearing a lot of those through balls. All right, boys, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Next week, we're going to be looking at Pep Guardiola's sort of like false nine or 4 one 4 one kind of tactic. We're also going to cover Marcelo Bielsa's tactic as well, but obviously that's got quite a lot of different sort of like playing restrictions. Go check out the tactic down below. Go, go and install it into your games and let me know how it gets on. If you can think of any other managers, any other iconic tactics you want to see in the series, let me know down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Take care. See you later.